Okay, welcome back to the Steady Trade Podcast. We have a, you know, one of our, we have a lot of different things we try and accomplish here. A lot, you know, we talk a lot about getting started in trading. We've had tons and tons of episodes about particularly getting started in, you know, low priced momentum stocks, whether that be long or short. Stephen and I talk a lot about what are commonly referred to as penny stocks. We're, we're buying hyped up stocks or we're, we're shorting hyped up stocks. Lots of times in that kind of 2 to $10 range. And that's interesting for a lot of new traders, especially you know, if you've got a small account, if you're just getting started. I think pretty much, every, well, not everybody, but, but a significant majority of new traders, that's where they gravitate towards is they go to you know, they start looking for 50 cent stocks. You know, we had a, a great interview with, with Huddy the other day. Um, it was a great episode. Check it out. Um, you know, he, he started out with a $20 Robin Hood account. And, uh, you know, so obviously he was looking for one cent, two cent stocks type stuff like that. So what I'm, what I'm excited about today is we have Matt, which is commonly referred to as Triforce Trader online. You can check him out at TriforceTrader.com. And he's got a little bit of a different approach, um, more of, I guess what I, and he might correct me on this, but what more of what I call like a macro approach and as well as more of an algorithmic approach. You know, what, what Steven and I do and what most penny stock traders do is we trade one sketchy little stock and we stare at it all day long. We micromanage it. Um, Matt does a lot more of like futures trading, whether that be SPY or oil or all these other markets. And he also does a lot of algorithmic type stuff. So, so welcome aboard, Matt. Glad to have you here. Um, just if you don't mind, let's kind of start out with the obligatory background. You know, what got you started in trading, kind of where you started and, and kind of get us up maybe up to where you are kind of today. Okay. Well, thank you guys for having me. Uh, I got started actually in trading or markets really when I was about 15 years old. At my school, they had a stock market competition and I literally just threw all of my money into Apple at the time and Apple doubled uh, in one year. So I ended up winning. And the reason I did it in school was because my teacher... Uh, told me that if we won, we didn't have to take the final exam, and he was quite <laughs> difficult. So, and after that, I was pretty much hooked, and I was been pretty much an innocent bystander in markets since then. To be honest, I've been studying markets probably for 15 years now, almost 14 years, something like that. Uh, you know, contrary to popular the way I look, I'm actually 28, <laughs> and um, you know, I'm not 12. And uh, also, yeah, so that's how I got started. And then uh, after that, I kind of just watched. I watched CNBC for about a year or two. And then by almost sheer coincidence, I was at the library at my school, or at, actually it was like across the street from my school. And I found this book called Don't Sell Stocks on Monday. And it was written like the 19... 70s and they were throwing all these books away because this was the age of where computers were actually starting to pick up pace and being in every school I mean we didn't have cell phones yet either um, so after that I read that book and I found out that this guy had been tracking the S&P since like the 1930s and what he was doing was is uh, he found that there were seasonal tendencies in the market and he had this probability of like every single day uh, when the market should rally, when it should decrease. And then after that, that kind of shattered my world a little bit because, you know, even though I had been studying markets for two years, it was just all nonsense. It was like technical analysis. It was fundamental analysis. And here was somebody proving with real odds that the market could be beaten. And so after that, I was extremely hooked. And when I got into college, I started programming and looking at that kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah. And then <clears throat> my mom, uh, I never like traded like with real money before that. And then my mom passed away when I was like 23 and she left me an inheritance, which I then used uh, to trade with and use all the strategies I had come up with, you know, 
all those years before. So that's kind of my story in a nutshell. Now, what drew you, was it just completely random or what drew you to that particular book? It was by, I, I just found it in a bin of books. Like, I would go, <laughs> yeah, like literally, you know, and I was looking at stuff, obviously, uh, at the library, like, you know, about stock market trading and all of that stuff. And then so, and then they're throwing all these books away. And I was like, maybe there's a book in there that has to do with that. So, and it was called Don't Sell Stocks on Monday. And I was like, that's a weird title for a right, book. Right, right. I've never, it, I, I like to think I've, I've read probably hundreds of market books, but I've never heard of that one, I admit. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's like, it's literally only like this big. It's not very long. And I was just reading it. I was just blown away. I was like, how come nobody is talking about this? Because you know, everyone that I knew was, you know, and adults suffer with this idea of the stock market, you know, and here's a guy that was just tracking everything and just like, look, it may not work, you know, this year, but there is a high probability that over the last 60, 70, 80 years that, you know, if you buy like before Thanksgiving, like four days before Thanksgiving, like the market should rally. And it works like 78% of the time. That's huge odds to someone that trades. Sure. You know? So uh, that was interesting. <laughs> so, so Matty, for, for people who are less interested in reading books, not, not naming any names, but in this modern generation, and uh, say I don't know where the, the sell stocks on Monday book is. If I sold my car tomorrow and I had a couple of thousand dollars, how could I make some money in the stock market? What would your best starting advice be? Okay, first, I don't believe, like, if you're talking about, like, a couple thousand dollars, like, one to five thousand dollars, I don't think that's an appropriate account size to start with. I think you should have a normal job and work until you can build up to your account at least ten thousand dollars, because even if you have, like, odds in your favor to win, you're going to make mistakes. And so if you have less money, just by definition, most likely you will blow up. Like the odds, anything under $10,000, your odds go way up of having traders blow up. There are some traders that can do it because they're extremely disciplined. Um, but I would say that is abnormal. And so honestly, if someone comes to me and says, hey, I have a few thousand dollars to trade, my, my always response is like, have enough money, at least $10,000. And you need a cushion too. you know, like, I mean, I'm all for people like, going for their dreams, but at what cost, you know? <laughs> well, and, and actually, I, I agree with you. I think kind of what Stephen was getting at is okay, let's I, a lot of our listeners are mm -hmm. new to trading want to learn it. So the significant majority of our trader or of our listeners, I think they have that day job. And, and most of them aren't, I hope, I mean, that one of the reasons we call it steady trade is, you know, the idea is to learn trading over time. So I think what's more what Steven's saying is, okay, I got a job, I got a few thousand, I'm not trying to, to turn this $2,000 into my primary income. If I want to learn trading, and it doesn't necessarily matter if this account fluctuates a little bit, what, what are those instruments? So, so throw out the, the, the idea that I'm going to quit my job tomorrow because okay. I, don't, I, you know, I don't think, I, at least again, I hope. I've a significant, met people like that though. Well, me too. <laughs> trust, me too. Lots uh, of them. But, but we're, we're, sure. we're assuming <laughs> that the listener isn't going to listen to Matt Owens and quit his job tomorrow. So. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, if you're going to trade, I mean, I think in anything that you do, whether it's penny stocks or futures or options or whatever you choose to do for your account size to grow it, like you need to have some kind of edge and statistical probability of the, you know, what you're doing to work in order for you to grow your account steadily. Uh, this idea of you know, just trying to trade off of like technical analysis or fundamental analysis and not tracking like actual setups that have real probabilities of work is you're doomed to fail. And so it, you know, you can say like, oh, I have a couple of thousand dollars. I want to trade penny stocks. Well, that's great. All of the edge in penny stocks is to the short side. You know, there are some edges to like buy, but overall, like the real meat of the edge 
the big edge is shorting. And unfortunately, you're not going to be able to take every short trade. So imagine if you had 10 great short trades that work 80% of the time. Realistically, you can only take five, which already messes you up in terms of statistics. So, you know, you really shouldn't be trading unless you know your edge. And that's bottom line. It doesn't matter what you trade. And so like, people always want to start with a small amount of money, you're going to make mistakes. So it's just like, you really shouldn't start trading unless you have an edge and you need to find either someone or teach yourself or track something before you trade. Uh, I think a lot of traders skip over that because they just want to trade you know right, right. <laughs> well yeah and, and that's you know something that we talk about a lot is is you know have that kind of long-term mindset and and you know if you're starting out with a a small account you, you know you don't expect to go pro in six months you don't expect to go pro in a year but maybe through that time you can you can learn to find your edge and I mm. think you know you know I think that is a good way to approach it with a small account. Cause I mean, ideally you have a decent job. Ideally you have some savings. And if you, if you pay a little bit of market tuition here to ultimately find out what works for you, maybe it's not penny stocks. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's something else. And I, that's kind of, of the approach that, that we look at and like what, what Steven's trying to do, you know, Steven's a long way from quitting his job because he knows he's not consistent yet. He's found, you know, ironically, you mentioned shorting penny stocks. He's found that's what works best for him. But he also knows that he's still kind of refining his edge too. Right. But what I'm saying is, is that I think we live in a day and age now where you don't have to put real capital to find an edge, you know. And a lot of people don't like that because they talk about the emotionality of the market, you know, that kind of stuff. But ultimately, we live in such a great day and age where you can, you can sim all of your trades and your strategies. And just because you may miss a trade, you know, you need at least 100 examples of doing the same thing statistically. So and I know a lot of people don't do that. They may have like 10 or 20 trades. And that's not enough to say, well, you know, this is above random, you know, um, and that is, is key. So you don't have like a lot of people, you know, some people like to do that where they discover their edge as they trade, but you don't have to do that anymore. A doctor doesn't work on, you know, <laughs> someone without, you know, going through practicing on, you know, uh, a cadaver. Uh, a cadaver. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Right>. yep. <laughs> it's no different in my opinion. Now, now, what do you, what do you use and what do you recommend? You know, again, so, so say, say I'm, I, say I'm looking to learn trading some, the futures market. I mean, what, what do you use? What do you, what do you kind of recommend as a way to get started? Say, say again, I've got a smaller account or maybe I got no account and I just want to simulate. Yeah. So I use TradeStation. Um, TradeStation, in my opinion, is one of the best platforms they don't pay me to say that but they're one of the best platforms for retail traders downside is of course just like every broker out there they're deficient in like shorting stocks obviously but in the futures market you don't have to worry about that you can go long or short uh it's liquidity's there there's no uh, you know, a lot of these brokers get away with murder when you short stocks because they'll give, you know, you get charged up the wazoo. In the futures market, you can go long or short and you can test pretty much anything on TradeStation. So it has its own like coding language. It back tests for you uh, and stuff like that. And the other thing that I, I use, uh, which I'm kind of like a beta tester slash lead trainer of just kind of like you, Tim, is build, is build Alpha. And so Build Alpha actually, what it does is it does a lot of the validation techniques. So you don't necessarily know how, to, you don't have to know how to program. You don't have to know how to test. Like it does all of that for you. And it actually builds strategies on whatever data set you give it. And then you can validate and test it all in the same platform um, but you can't trade off of it just yet uh, but you can build strategies and stuff like that so people who don't want to learn how to code and they just kind of want to get down to the meat and bones like that's another platform 
So what I, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is, you know, I think a lot of, as I mentioned, a lot of people come to the podcast because they're okay. They're, they're Googling, you know, trading stocks. Maybe they find us or they're, or they're Googling make money in the market, et cetera. So you're not the traditional penny stock trader. You're trading futures. So you may, you may chuckle. You may, this may, it may or may not surprise you. Probably a significant majority of our listeners have no idea what we're talking about when we say futures contracts. Can you kind of give an example of, of like what you trade, a background, you know, kind of educate our listeners on what these instruments are? Sure. So the futures market essentially is a derivative product, meaning that's just a fancy word mathematicians came up with to track something else. That's all that means. So like, for example, if the S&P goes up, there's a futures contract called the E-mini S&P 500. So if the big S&P goes up, this also goes up because it's a derivative. Um, it uses what's known as leverage, not margin, which people get confused all the time. Think of it like a Chuck E. Cheese token when you're trading it. You put down like $5,000, you get one contract. That contract has an intrinsic value. So for the S&P, it's like $50. So if the S&P goes up by one point, you make $50. If it goes down and you're long, you would lose $50. Uh, you know, so that's really how it works. It's just futures track an underlying asset class, essentially. So if you want exposure to oil, there's a futures contract for oil. So when the price of like light sweet crude oil goes up or down, it goes up and down. Um, but each contract has its own value and just like a stock really in some senses, but has its own value and it moves with the commodity prices or the spot prices, if you will. Um, and it allows people to have exposure to a wide variety of different markets. For example, in a given day, I can be trading the indexes like NASDAQ, S&P, whatever with the, in the futures market. I can be trading grains. I can be trading oil. I can be trading gold. I can be trading uh, all of these other things. And I can trade all of these things because the futures market is very liquid and you can go long or short. Like I said before, uh, it doesn't matter. And you know, you're just putting down a small amount of money to trade those, those products. And the futures market essentially is just a way of doing that. And it just follows an underlying market, which some so people don't like, but it's like, you know, like, for example, a lot of penny stock traders trade like JNUG and all of that. It's like, why are you doing that? That's not, that's not the, like, just trade the actual gold futures contracts. Okay. I, I agree you with know? you totally. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, these guys are like, I, I love, I love when guys are like shorting a short 3X ETF. And right. I'm like, what? Like, I'm like, what? <laughs> Like if you, if you want exposure, if you want to trade gold, like just trade the actual contract one, it's cheaper. Like in the long run, it's cheaper to trade it. You can hold, you can go short so easily. You're the liquidity's there. It's a 23 hour market. So if something goes wrong, you can get taken out. Uh, you know, like in the middle of the night, that's why a lot of times I'm mostly automated because I'm asleep you know, and, uh, I literally sleep and make money. That's literally, if you boil down my life besides research, like that's literally what happens. So, 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 so I think the first question is going to be, so, so we've got, you know, we got cotton, we got wheat, we got corn, we got soybeans, we got oil, we got S and P's, we've got, you know, pork bellies. We've got all these futures contracts. If this is something I am interested in, how do I have any idea which one to pick? How do I, you know, just like stocks, how do I decide, okay, this is a futures that I want to maybe test or experiment trading? Right. So you would just do the research and see if you actually have an edge. Okay. That's literally the bottom line. Like there's no, the thing is, is that I think what eats people alive when they trade stocks and no offense to you guys is like the fact that you constantly have to be on the hunt. And I know like you like to hunt as a person. So <laughs> like, it makes logical sense that like that's something you enjoy doing, like stocking something. But the thing is, is like for me, it doesn't matter what market I trade. Data is data. And I try different combinations of different strategies on different data sets so like i have strategies that could be fully automated on penny stocks the only problem is 
is that the symbols always are changing, but the underlying price structure for that strategy, like the edge is the same. Does that make sense? So yeah, the only I thing mean, I have to do yeah. is literally, if, I, if it meets all the conditions, put on the symbol, okay? Like you guys do scanners, so do I when it comes to that stuff. If it meets all the conditions, then automate the strategy, that's it. Yeah, it's funny you say that because I think, <laughs> I, I, I will admit, totally admit, that and and I'll let Steven answer too. I think a lot of what the low price stock guys like us, I mean, I I mean, I've been doing it for 10 years. You're right. I think part of what I like, and this is just you know, different strokes for different folks, but I like every day <laughs> trying to find that one yeah. stock. And I mean, you know, you're like, hey, that's a waste of time. But what yeah, I mean, well, what do you what do you what do you think, Steven? I mean, is that is that part of your love or or, or not? No, no, I pretty much hate it. I pretty much hate <laughs> it. Um, there is nothing worse than when the market's going through a, a lull and you're just sitting there thinking, um, well, I'll just try and trade this or I'll try and trade this or I'll do nothing. And, and when you compromise the strategy, then you start losing money. Uh, but for me, what I was interested with Matty, because he was talking about um, a lot of crazy stuff that I don't understand. But it sounds very cool. And I love the idea of being the guy from Wall Street where money never sleeps. But what I was going to say is, it, say you had to take it to total basics and it had to be like Excel level. How would, and it, and it was micro cap stocks. Is there any advice you'd give people just to, to get their feet wet uh, tracking kind of stocks? Because I know I, I've had a lot of people ask me this when I was saying that you were going to come on. Yeah, sure. So the thing is, is that whatever you're doing is you need to boil it down to X plus Y equals Z. Okay, which is like a very common math formula. Okay, so X would be the condition. What is your setup? Y would be uh, your trigger. What's going to get you into the trade? And Z is going to be your follow through. Okay, so for example, if you were going to track uh, biggest percent gainers, well, and I'm just trying to apply this particularly to you because I know what you trade. Um, so if you're going to do that, you would need to come up with a rule that, okay, I'm only going to trade anything that's moved from the close to the open of 5%. Like, so yeah. meaning the stock is up 5% or more or 10% or more or 50% or more. Okay. And that would be rule number one. Now let's say it takes out. So that condition happens and now you have, the next day, the close takes out yesterday's low, okay? And you would sell short and your risk would be the previous day's high. That would be, so that same bar that made that 50% jump, your stop loss would be the high. When it closes below the low, you would sell short. That would, yep. be, that would be an all-encompassing strategy and you would then track that specific strategy, never deviating from it. Yeah. Right. So yeah, that's... Yep. It's boring to a lot of people, but honestly, that's how you discover your edge. Like literally good trading, and this is what I tell my students all the time, is boring. It's very boring, mm -hmm. okay? But the thing is, is people get caught up in this cocaine-like, you know, thing with the market, and it is fun, okay? Like the stock market for me in the last like week has just been like, okay? Because volatility has increased but I'm still trading my strategies and to make you feel better. I took $186,000 loss. Okay. Jesus. So $5,000. Yeah. Like literally last week, that's what I took because volatility increased by X percent. But in terms of my entire net worth and portfolio, because I'm trading different strategies to spread the risk around. Okay. Yeah. It was only 5%. Yeah. Okay if you want to be successful at anything you do, it's all about, re you know, repeating that same process over and over and over again. Yeah. The, tend the tendency is that you feel as a human being that you can add something. Okay. And the reality is, is you are the most insignificant part. Okay. Yeah. And I know that sucks to no, like, it doesn't cause you admit to money. yourself. Yes. Yeah. But the thing I is, is it, money, so. But it does dehumanize people a little bit. Like it hurts their feelings. 
you know, but that's really the reality. Like if we want to talk like straight up, that is the reality. You that's- are the worst thing for you. That's it. And I, I don't really believe in psychology of trading because I think it should be all mechanical, you know, because literally in a game of numbers, like human beings are the weakest link period. No, so I just, and I, just, I just have to say it as well. Like probably on an emotional level, I'm a pretty emotional guy and <laughs> I've lost, I lost consistently for like 18 months. And the minute I started tracking trades, say I stock stack up with 30%, on average, they'll spike 78% if they've got bad long-term charts, especially biotechs. Started making money all the time. If I traded the first 15 minutes over and over and over and over, then I got cocky, started thinking I knew everything and just lost it all again. Right. And it's so psychologists crazy. call this like hot hand fallacy. Right. So. But what, what you say is extraordinarily true. I, I don't understand any of the mechanics of it, but the idea of tracking data, taking it out of the human hands and relying on data is is the only way you can be successful in my eyes yeah and so and but the thing is is like you have to come up with the structure of what you're going to do but you need to boil it down to a formula and you have to use like open high low close um those things are very significant because to me, the only, the only reason I'm successful at what I do is because I have a fundamental belief, if you will, that in the price data, kind of like poker, that it's showing its hands, okay? So yeah. I'm taking advantage of that kind of inconsistency, if you will. But you have to, you, if you're going to do Excel or you want to track anything, you have to be consistent what's your risk, what's your reward, what's your stop loss, okay? Um, And having stop losses, and this is very key too, like having stop losses that are number values is meaningless, okay? So anytime that you create an Excel spreadsheet on anything that you're tracking, you need to use a stop that's either highest high or lowest low. And what that means is, is like, what is the high, if I'm short, what is the highest high of the last N days? So five days, two days, three days, one day. And the reason that is, is because your stop loss is going to be adjusted for market volatility. If you put a stop in that's only 200, that's not appropriate for a stock that's but, moved. But, 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 but see, this does, this, the, the, and I'll let you finish, but this doesn't work for Steven because he wants to short day one on a stock <laughs> up 100%. How the fuck is he supposed to figure out a stop loss on that? Right. Rid- riddle yeah, me no. this, that, that Batman. <laughs> but just, just, just to say though, like say on average a stock, if you see the same thing happen over and over and over and over, so every stock that caps up 50% on bad news or with a bad long-term chart, on average it spikes 10% and fails. If it goes more than 10%, then you cut it because it doesn't fall within the normal anomaly. But right. generally it spikes 10% and fails. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, you track it a hundred times, it works 70% of the time. I mean, how will I be wrong? <laughs> If I just follow that method, you wouldn't wouldn't be wrong, but you need to have some kind of risk limit of like tap out. So yeah, you have to tap out above like 10%. If it goes more than 10, it it breaks the formula. But can you track by percent? Yeah, you can track by percent. That's fine. Because percent is just the range of the bar. So it's high minus the low essentially, or from where the close to the high is. So it doesn't, that's a, that's a measurement of volatility really what you're talking about it's a percentage change so the thing is though is like you need to have a risk weighting also in there that you're comfortable with constantly using you know so like i've taken shorts where you know the risk is 27 dollars. that's the real risk of the market so i'm if that's my risk level i'm going to make my position size appropriate for that risk level. I'm not going to be betting a thousand shares. I'm going to be betting like 500 shares <laughs> or less. I, I, I feel like so. we should be hanging out more often. I feel like we should be friends, Matty. I feel like there are some things that we, I could learn from you and you could learn from me. I, I, I don't know what, <laughs> what I could teach you, but I, I think you, I could learn some things from you. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is like, I really pride myself because like I have a lot of traders that actually come from the penny stock world who are very inconsistent. And when they see the way that I trade and the way that I do stuff, which is just pure tracking and testing and stuff, 
it turns them around. I mean, I had someone that came to me, they were down like $7,000. They're up like a hundred, over a hundred K in a year, but it's consistent gains because. And they're just, just real quick there. They're still trading penny stocks. They just have taken a more disciplined approach. No, they generally go to, they generally come over to the future side. Okay. Okay. That's what I was like. Okay. Because again, it's that problem of even if the edge is there, you can't bet every single edge. And that's always a huge problem because you don't like, what if your win rate is 70% and so you have 10 trades, right? But in that year, you could only take five. Well, what if all of those fives are losers? Well, that sucks because you couldn't capitalize on the stuff that you know works. You can't let the odds play themselves out. So, and 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 for the for the newer traders that are listening, basically what Matt is referring to is a lot of these penny stocks. As much as I love to short them, as much as Stephen likes loves to short them, very uh, quite frequently the best setups. You cannot. You need to borrow these yeah. shares from your broker. You need to get a borrow in order to short them. And quite frequently, especially in that, you know, 50 cent to $10 range, you just cannot get a borrow. I, I mean, we actually did a uh, interview about uh, Ozark trades, Phil Godeker. I mean, mm-hmm. he mentioned he's got eight brokerage accounts <laughs> just to try and get. Now, he's one of the best penny stock shorters out yeah. there. But I mean, if you're getting started or you're new, you can't possibly have eight eight brokerage accounts and even with eight brokerage accounts he still doesn't sometimes get the bottle so that's what to the new guys that's what that's what matt's referring to yeah so yeah i probably should have watched all of your episodes to see how far along you guys are but um yeah no my point is this like i trade the futures market because it's liquid and i can trade out my edges as many times as i want i'm not limited to the fact of like i can't find shares to borrow or i can't go long or something weird happens and i love in the futures market it's a 23 hour market so if something goes really 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 wrong in that 23 hour like time spans then i can get out i'm not waiting for the market to open Mm -hmm. i think that kind of like it's a huge advantage you know so go on uh, yeah, buddy, no, I was, right. I was, I was just gonna say I'm totally sold, and I, I was just thinking, <laughs> I need to, I need to start making some weekly YouTube videos about what it's like to to be a part of your course. Yeah, you <laughs> could totally do that. Like it's, <laughs> it's we'll, fine. We'll, like make some deal together, and uh, yeah. We'll, but the we'll, thing we'll, is, is like you, you have like you've been doing this what two years? Uh, right? About eight. 18 months now. And okay, yeah. I've, I've actually made all my money back when I started tracking data. When I started right. tracking data, I made all the money back I lost and then I stopped and I lost it again. Yeah. And this is the common, this is the common problem, which is the, you believe that you're adding something that's special. And sometimes that is the case, but 99% of the time, the answer to that is no. <laughs> and that's really hard for people to swallow, I think. So, so Matty, basically you are the universe is huge. We are insignificant. And just yes. let me sh- do the shit. All right. So, uh, yes. If you listen to me talk, <laughs> also, you'll, you'll discover that I'm very zen-like when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> so, so I think one of the questions is, is going to be, and, and we went over the bio a little bit, but how did you, I mean, obviously, you've got this structured approach. You've got this methodology that, that works for you. You've got this programming experience. I mean, how did you get, you know, you know again, think of, I'm some newbie listening to this this uh podcast i mean how did matt get to the where he understood this and 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 had this process well i okay so first i read a lot um and i talked i talked and i hate reading okay that's like something that people don't understand like i have enough money now that i would pay people to read to me (laughs) like I just absolutely hate it. So audiobooks were like, a, like when audiobooks like first came out, like it was a gift from the universe. I was like, thank you so much. And then, so I've read, I don't know if you guys can see my bookshelf back there, but all of those books, there's programming books, there's a lot of it's like stock books, you know, trading books, all of those books I've read. And I have, you know, and I listen, I listen to it constantly, even to this day. Um, I taught myself programming, really. 
in in college my one of my best friends he was becoming like a computer science major and he was like talking to me about it and I was like that can totally be applied to the markets and so I had an a really bad insomnia in in college just being away from home I don't know what it was I never had that in my life but I would go to school all day I would work all day and then at from like 1 a.m until 6 a.m I would just sit there and teach myself to program I literally was up for days on end for a whole year and then I got really sick and then my mom was like I'm gonna pull you out out of college if you don't like basically get your shit together like and I was like I don't know what it is about being away from home I just had this crazy insomnia I couldn't sleep and I don't know if it was because I was like scared about being out in the real world for the first time by myself and like I was like freaking out I don't know what it was but during the during those like two or three years in college like I I would say I had exponential growth in terms of you know, just constantly being around it, teaching myself, doing that kind of stuff. Um, And then when I was in college, that's when I found out about like Tim Sykes and I saw like what he was doing and I was like, that's pretty cool. Um, You know, teaching other people how to trade and he was successful in his own right. Um, But I never like took anything from him because I knew that being a day trader was not, not my thing. You know, I, I am very lazy by nature. And so if I can make things that do things for me, I will like that. I'll spend all day working to get nothing done. Is really my <laughs> motto. <laughs> I like that. I like that. But, so, uh, um, but yeah. And so I just, I just really studied. And then like, um, you know, I saw Superman like Paul and he was making an ungodly amount of money. Like, so I really joined his class because, and this is, goes back to like what you should do is really just, you know, read and find mentors and be around them. I've had thousands of mentors in my life. You're never just going to have one mentor. And who's, your favorite? who's my favorite? Who's your favorite trader, favorite mentor? I'm just very curious. Okay. It's, it's, it's funny before you answer that. It's, you know, I think Steven and I, we, we didn't collaborate, but we both had our bullets. And one of you my don't have bullets- to say me. You don't have to say me, Marty. <laughs> I would say one of my favorites is Larry, Larry Williams. I took a lot away from him. And if you ever have a chance to like read his book, he came out with a book in like 2011, read that book. Um, it has so much good information and it's simplistic in terms of he explains everything very well. Okay. Like one of my, do you remember the title off the top of your head or, uh, it's called, I mean, I can grab it. It's, um, well, I just, I know everybody's going to ask. Yeah. It's called You're offering the the golden ticket here. People are going to want to know this. So it's called long-term secrets to short-term trading. Okay. I like the title. Yeah. He's, but what I'm saying, like, I'm not, I'm not a macro guy where I'm holding for like, you know, months. Like I, I'm a short term trader in terms of like I hold for maybe a week, you know? Um, so that was a really good book, but yeah, so, I mean, I learned a lot from him and I met him actually like down in South Florida one time and I had him sign his own book. (laughs) Um, but he's very successful in his own right. You know, Larry was in a stock market competition. He took $10,000, turned it into 2 million and then lost a million but this is all recorded documented stuff where it's in a competition. Like he's very successful at what he does. And he also trades the futures market as well. But yeah, so then I saw like Superman and I was like, Jesus Christ, this man is like batting, you know, 500 K like, what is he doing? And so that's why that was like the main thrust for me to like join his class. Um, but I would say, you know, Paul, he's a uh, old school kind of dude in terms of he does all the fundamental analysis and then he, but he still goes from his gut. But I learned a lot from him in terms of what it means to have like true grit because his ability to sit through stuff that doesn't work like in the first week or first two weeks where most people would like, I would say, give up, (laughs) you know, he he's, and you know, he's taking huge losses too. He's kind of, you know, back in the day, he's kind of a gunslinger and 
you know, I learned a lot. I learned about, I would say more about, you know, just letting your edge play itself out, like whatever that may be and what it means to be a true grit. And also like when my mom passed away, like that entire chat room plus him were very, very supportive. And so even though I don't trade like him or I don't think like him and I don't agree with him, doesn't necessarily mean like in some universal way it was a very um good thing for me because i needed that i i was very distraught <laughs> so you know and he's been through a lot in and of himself and just kind of having someone there to like talk to not only about that issue but also you know i'm trading so think about that you know right. it's like you know, I had this edge and everything and I was destroying my edge. I was down like 30% in the first like couple months on a hundred thousand dollar account. That's a lot. That would be more than what I would make, you know, at any normal job. And so like, I would just talk to him. So, you know, yeah, I don't resemble anything like him in terms of like how I trade, but in terms of someone like being there for me through a rough time and teaching me what it's like to just let your stuff play out, like he was very beneficial. So in this case, Paul was a mentor to me, not in the market, but what it means to be a trader um, and what it means. Yeah. So what it means to really just let yourself play out and just having someone there who not only was making a f- fuckload of money but just like (laughs) just someone who's like you know and he's gone bankrupt before just someone who's been through a lot do you know what i'm saying kind of like yoda someone there that's like (laughs) you know that you can talk to and bounce stuff off of but i i I know paul well great guy i love him but i i I, no offense but i couldn't i couldn't really make the 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 yoda and paul connection (laughs) he's a he's a he's a big tan dude doesn't doesn't really make me think of yoda but but, but, but he's no. but he's but he's wise and he's right and, and he's he's, <laughs> and he's soft yeah I, so I get the yeah so he he's and that's and that's the connection between him and i it wasn't necessarily like you know i would say tim turns out people who are exactly like him in terms of like what they trade and what they do i think the people that yeah. have deviated the most from that kind of stuff is you know, you got Ducks and you got, um, you know, Tim Gertani, where they are, I would say, more closely or getting closer to what I do versus just um, trading from like what they feel. So it's an interesting like dichotomy. But overall, like if I was to like synopsis, you know, put a synopsis as if you're a new trader, you need a mentor and you need to be reading even if you hate it, you have audiobooks now. When I was growing up, audiobooks didn't exist, okay? Computers were like just starting to become a thing. I didn't have my first cell phone until I was like 16, 17 years old. And then even then it wasn't used the way it's used today. It was basically to make sure that I wasn't dead. <laughs> now, well, Matty, Matty, I've got to say, I wasn't 100% sure what to expect uh, during this interview, but it's it's been it's been very uh, very thought provoking and very for me it's been very rewarding. I mean, we're in Valentine's Day and I'm I'm feeling in love not with you but with the <laughs> with the conversation. <laughs> but uh, I've got two simple questions, really two simple questions. One, we've talked about a lot of kind of high level stuff. Yeah, can mm-hmm. can it be done? Not can it be done simply, but can someone of average intelligence, someone who's not super smart, can they take this on? Can they take this knowledge on? Can they take these code and software platforms on and, and make it work? And uh, the second question is, where did you get Triforce Trader from? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. to me, intelligence is meaningless. Okay. If I walk into a construction, sh- a construction site, I am the dumbest person there. Okay. Uh, yeah, it re- no, intelligence no, no. is always relative to the task. And if you want to learn something, uh, you can do anything. There's nothing holding you back except you. Well, and, especially right now. I mean, with YouTube, with audio books, with right. the internet. I mean, 20 years ago, that's, that's kind of one of my stories. I had this huge interest in, in trading and finance, but I was in a small town in Michigan with no internet in 1989. I had no freaking options. You know, today you've got limitless options. Right, exactly. And so... But people still make excuses, you know, and so it's, I would say for me, 
like it's if you think like you can't do it you won't be able to do it if you think you can do it you will like there's no difference i think people set up roadblocks in their life um they have to have like different stepping stones and they feel like they have to achieve it but really it just comes down to are you going to do it or are you not going to do it like that's the only thing you know there is no try if you will <laughs> okay um and so it's not an intelligence thing it's just really you have to just sit down and do it and then where triforce trader came from is because everyone online always has like kind of like a pseudo name um and everyone in the chat room that i was at obviously like superman they all had like these weird incredible trades like all <laughs> of these like weird superhero names and like i'm not a big believer in superheroes so i went with triforce which is from the game like legend of zelda which is about basically a boy who's asleep his whole life and then he gets woken up to actually do something with his life and to me it was symbolic to me because when i found trading like it made like everything make sense i guess it's something that i knew that i really wanted to do and uh because for the most part up until that point i was kind of like just uh i don't know what if you know i was just kind of like going along i guess you know well and, which a lot of young guys go yeah. through that you know you gotta you gotta kind of find your purpose i mean i didn't know right. what the hell i wanted to do when i was 25 you know exactly so i think yeah i don't know so that's why i chose the name and it's about a normal dude going through life to save someone and also capture this thing called triforce like a triforce which it's got three pennants also which also resembles what i think about the markets which is another reason i i chose it. it's basically three triangles so in trading you have three things i think you have fundamental technicals and then you have quantitative analysis those things go together in the legend of zelda the myth is wisdom power and courage like so it was just an all it's my one of my favorite video games to play and it worked for my brand and also what i believed about markets coincidentally so that's why i chose it and i didn't want to go with something that's like a, a mythology of some superhero godlike creature because we don't even resemble that so <laughs> no that's it's awesome i'll let tim talk i just want to say one more thing uh, I, i've loved this interviews and i just want to say in, in dedication, everyone who's watching on YouTube or on the podcast, uh, comment your favorite superhero name. Now, this will be a cool <laughs> thing. I'll see what some people come up with, but I'll let Tim, Tim, please ask the, the final question. Yeah, it, actually, yeah, that was a, first of all, thanks, Matt. It was a great interview. A lot of, a lot of interesting stuff. Inspirational to me too. I'll admit I have dabbled in the futures market, but you know, I'll be the first one to admit normally I just do it when penny stocks are dead because I'm a, degen <laughs> because I'm a degenerate. <laughs> But, um, so what, uh, you kind of wrap up, what are your, you, you kind of talked about, you found your purpose, you found this system, this thing kind of, what, what are your goals and what, what are your plans for, for the future? I mean, are you just kind of keep on rolling what you're doing or, or, or do you have other aspirations or where do you kind of see yourself going? I would like to eventually open up my own hedge fund that also like doubles as a place where people can actually learn how to trade slash you know maybe we hire them in the fund um that would be my ultimate goal i think for what i do in terms in the retail space of trading it's not it's not something sexy or conducive and i think it does help people if they allow it to i guess <laughs> but I think it's more conducive in the hedge fund space. Um, and that would be my ultimate goal if that doesn't pan itself out because I don't know how I would feel about managing other people's money per se. You never know how you're gonna react to that. But, you know, I really enjoy teaching and it's what I love to do. And I also trade in real life with real money and a real account and um, I love, you know, watching my students go from like being destroyed to an aha moment. And so that's, you know, trading is very, very lonely, I would say. Sure. Um, in this day and age. And it's nice to me to be able, you know, if I was just by myself, like what's the purpose? And so for me, like teaching has given me a purpose also to some degree. So I'm thankful for my students, honestly. 
And uh, yeah, that's kind of my overarching goal. I think, I honestly think I'll probably trade until I die. Like that's literally the thing that's going to like. That's yeah, I, I, I talk all the time. I mean, I'm like, people talk about retiring. I'm like, whatever, man. If you're, why would I ever want to stop trading? I mean, right. It's like, no way, man. I'll be, I'll be laying on that that hospital bed <laughs> you know, try, try, trying to trade the freaking the heart rate monitor it's, it's breaking it's breaking out right but the thing is is like i mean ultimately i know this podcast is for new people but the words of advice i could give honestly is don't feel like you have to rush into anything you have your entire life to trade take the time to do the research and do the work okay don't let numbers scare you that is the most bullshit excuse i've ever heard in my life and if you're really interested in this, in one year's time, you will find out whether or not this is for you. Because once you get past like the money and like the addiction quality of it, most people turn away because they realize like, holy shit, this is hard work and I don't want to put in the time. And so, you know, it may not be for you. I've literally told students to their face, listen, trading is not for you okay <laughs> you have no passion for it and once this addictive quality is gone right you won't be back and it's just like anything else it takes real work and you need to have an edge so don't run into the market feel like you have to trade today tomorrow the market will always be there if it's not and i eat my words trust me the world is going to be in a hell in a handbasket okay <laughs> so just focus on your edge take the time to learn find a mentor learn from as many people as possible even if they're not real traders you can still pick up nuggets from people okay and so don't like close off your mind and you know just know your edge before you trade there's tons of software like build alpha and trade station and you can automate the process think about that Okay, think about that. You're not at in front of your computer screen all day long. That's amazing. Thank you, technology. That's all and, I have and, to say. <laughs> not, if, if, if someone wants to do this, where do they find you? How, how you do can, they find you? So TriforceTrader.com. I have a newsletter on Profitly. I have some of my systems. If people, like I get people who are like, I don't want to learn anything. I just want to trade what you have. I have systems on TradeStation that people can purchase. And if they want to do training with me, uh, you can do it, check out Triforce training. The first part, there's like, there's going to be four parts. There's only two right now. The first part is literally just for new people, like getting them. It's 30 hours long. So enjoy that. And it comes with homework, which I grade. And the second part is right now that's going on, which you can still join because it's all recorded is I'm teaching people how to code. And I took that on. It's been way more difficult than I thought it was going to be but we're making progress like <laughs> so those really my the main thing where you can find me is on my website and you can email me I answer usually within 24 hours because I have OCD and I don't let my inbox go to like a thousand emails that's <laughs> into me okay so play off of that little edge right there okay so yeah that's where you can find me and you know that's all i have to say <laughs> all right well thanks a lot matt um i think it's gonna be a great you know again one of one of the things we want to accomplish is kind of bring different viewpoints to everybody and and i think we we nailed that did you have anything steven or no no i thoroughly 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 enjoyed it uh it was really really insightful really really good Hi, this is Erica Meyer from Toronto, Canada, and when I'm sitting at the cottage, I like to listen to Stephen and Tim on Steady Trade Podcast. You can register to win real, actual prizes at their website, steadytrade.com. And if you really like what you hear, give the podcast a five-star rating and write us a glowing review on iTunes. I did, and this is how we say goodbye in Toronto. Ooh,